hearing is not as good as seeing for oneself, says a Chinese proverb. And that's the idea behind this unique demonstration. The Cass County Soil Conservation District uses this stream table to show how human activities like construction and landscaping can impact the Red River. This is a demonstration of a stream. Um, this is a stream table that Cass County Soil Conservation District has available for Cass County activities. Um, this um, is, a rec is sand. Um, it's not actually sand, it's sandblasting plastic, but it, it acts a lot like natural soil. So you're able to demonstrate how a stream naturally works in ecosystem. Now, this stream is going to move pretty rapidly. It's going to evolve quickly, and it usually won't do that naturally, but this is an easy way to speed up the process of showing how a stream works. So the parts of a stream are when you have your up at the top where the river starts, you have the head of your river. And at the bottom where your river ends, you have the mouth of your river. Um, you'll notice that some of the sand is moving through the river, and that is called erosion, and that's the movement of sediment away from its original location. Parts of the stream within this area include, um, there's two parts of a, two, part, two different types of banks. You have your cut bank and your point bar. The cut bank is just what it's saying, is it's cutting away. So this will be your outside bend. If, you have a, if you're looking at a letter C, it'd be the outside part of the C. And the inside part of the C would be your point bar. So this is your cut bank, and this is your point bar. So normally, you'll have um, the stream cutting away here on the outside, and then it'll be depositing some sediment on the point bar. Streams also move fastest on the outside. The water tends not to flow in a straight line. It flows in an S-curve, and these are called meanders. Um, meanders can get very wide as they cut out, and eventually it may, the river may go so far out that it'll eventually cut back straight, and then you'll have that um, section of the river where the river no longer flows through, and that's an oxbow lake. Um, so you'll notice that the river tends to flow in S-curves, and it's flowing fastest on the cut banks on the outside. It also gets, tends to get deepest right off the cut bank because the speed of the water is collecting, picking up more sediment. So I'll speed this up a little bit. And you'll notice that the stream naturally is going to move. It's not going to stay within its confines, same as the Red River. And the faster the water speeds up, the more sediment we have moving downstream. You'll notice here where there's roots or a plant, it can, um, it's holding the soil here in place, but it does tend to change the way the river works. So you'll notice here, this is holding this soil in place. Whereas now, if I was to move these pieces, it will change the way the river system's working. So you'll notice that there's a rapid erosion taking place here now that I removed those pieces, that rock and that dead wood debris. Any river naturally wants to do those S-curves, and it's not going to want to go straight. Um, if, I, if we had started with a straight river, it would eventually start making these long S-curves, me meanders through the system. There's two types of slumping that happen on the Red River. One is where the river just, the bank of the river um, just falls down, and so then the parts that are on the bank fall down and they actually fall over into the river. Then you have another type of slumping where the underlying soil, the clays, actually are pushing into the river. They're moving under the surface. And so as the, the underlying soil moves out, the bank actually just sinks vertically. So the trees and the house will actually still be sitting somewhat upright. It doesn't actually fall over. Well, we see a light, lot of light bulbs going off. It's kind of hard if you're sitting in a relatively small area of the river, say 100 or 200 feet, and you're looking at the changes that might be occurring on your property. But when you look at a stream table and you see that actions that somebody has taken hundreds of feet from you will have an effect. 
in some case hundreds of miles from you. So increasing flows in the river through a rainstorm or from a release from a dam or from a storm drain system, as an example, in increases the speed and that also affects the, the erosion. So what we're seeing people doing is mentally having that light bulb going off and they are saying, aha, and that's what we want. We want people to understand how this works so then that they can then um, make better decisions. Um, when clay gets wet, it naturally starts to become slippery. Um, the water between the, part the soil particles just make it more plastic-like, and so it tends to slip. And you'll notice that if you um, rub wet clay between your fingers, whereas sand tends to stay more gritty still, clay will become more elastic. The Red River Valley is uh, definitely a clay dominant soil system. The weight of anything on the bank will affect the way that the system's working. Um, these demonstrations are pretty light, but if we had weight back here, then you're pushing down on the soil surface and you might see that slippage underneath the surface. Um, it can even happen further back on the system um, if you have a large heavy object or um, you deposit a large amount of soil on the surface, um, you can be pushing back quite a ways from the river and it will still be sliding towards the river. It, it shows it much better than just telling people about it or showing them pictures when you can actually see how the river changes with something as simple as moving a root wad or a tree that has fallen into the river or removing the native vegetation that's on the bank of a river. Removing that causes problems and we can see that in the stream table. And all of a sudden the bank is getting very close to where the houses are located. The most important thing to remember when living along a river is that a river is a dynamic system. It's naturally going to move um, back and forth. And so one year you're going to have the river bed, the river running through a certain channel in, in 10 to 100 years later, it's, it could be in a completely different area. Some ways that we can slow down the process, this natural process is um, keep houses back from the river to avoid that extra weight. Um, having native vegetation, native vegetation naturally has very deep root systems and oftentimes um, Oftentimes it's very fibrous and large root systems, so it will hold the soil underneath in place, limiting the, um, limiting the chance of erosion of the bank. Um, also, <coughs> saturation of the soil can lead to further erosion. Um, by having native plants, they'll be absorbing some of that water and evaporating it back into the atmosphere. Um, by if, if you were to remove native vegetation and plant a standard lawn, you would have a less of a root system and you're probably going to irrigate your lawn. So you're going to be adding water to the system, removing your native vegetation, and you'll be therefore increasing your chance of erosion. We just encourage people to get some education before they make decisions. Also looking at things like if you live on the river now, what type of vegetation should you be planting. Uh, bluegrass, while we all like that appearance, I have bluegrass in my yard, but um, maybe that's not the best vegetation to have next to the river. There might be other choices. And to educate yourself and to learn what works with the river. So instead of fighting the river, you learn to live with it. To learn more about the Red River and what you can do to protect it, visit riverkeepers.org or call Riverkeepers at 701-235-2895.